sort of what we're celebrating here is uh, remembering that, that tragedy and the sacrifice of, of the volunteers of, and the victims of, at, at Remedios Hospital. My granduncle was a white Russian who escaped from St. Petersburg, the Russian Revolution, came here as a refugee in 1918, 1919, and he was killed at Remedio Circle on the morning of February 13, 1945. He was doing nothing. He was actually holding his three-year-old son, George, who's in Madison, Connecticut now, and a Japanese sniper took a shot, bounced off one person and went into his stomach. They were under aerial attack, couldn't get to the hospital. It took about two hours to move that one block, and then he died here that morning. This is the funny thing, I, I lost track of this family. My father, they went different routes, so I didn't know I had this, essentially, first cousin once removed in Connecticut until six months ago. And he sent pictures of the memorial. He, he grew up in Manila up until 1955. He was born here. And he said, you know, Matthew, oh, uh, Uncle Nick is buried there. You know, my father is buried there. And I said, well, that, that's news to me. So then I started this project about six months ago. And I find out that the school over the years has evolved. They closed off the front entrance. They ended up damaging the memorial. They didn't realize the significance of it. It got covered over with subsequent renovations and it was a, basically a pile of rubble. And at that point, I then went back and did a little more research and I tried to find out the names of the people. Um, I ended up connecting with Isabel Pickernell. Her, her uh, uncle, Jimmy, who was a 15-year-old boy here, a volunteer at the hospital, was also killed. So now we have two families. Um, I started Googling and I said, well, I probably need a forensic pathologist. I need someone who can help me with bones. So I contacted the UP College of Medicine and I got in touch with Dr. Raquel Fortune. Yeah. She's the preeminent pre forensic pathologist here. And she said, wow, this is a really exciting project. We would love to do a best practice of forensic exhumation, but you should really talk to an archeologist as well. So she put me in touch with Dr. Uh, Zandro Villanueva, who's a noted uh, archeologist here, and then sat with him in Makati, had him over coffee, and he said, you probably have to talk to the UP Archaeologist Studies Program because you need affiliation with the National Museum because this is cultural property. So we started only last Thursday, so that's February 6th. Um, and we're trying to work within a three-week period, but that again depends on um, ano yung maging condition and status of what we will be uncovering. doesn't necessarily mean just because you have um, Maria Orosa's grave marker there, that's her. Because again, we know and the original goal of the project was to see whether or not we can retrieve or we can find the remains of the original um, names of the deceased listed. trying to sort of raise the awareness of that. Okay. And what is the goal? By raising that awareness, um, we remember. We remember the sacrifices that all Filipinos made here. We're talking about 100,000 civilian lives that were lost. 